my name is Jason and this is just watches. Today we have the Raven Trekker on the channel. Now I first saw Raven at Windup in 2019 and met Steve the founder, but this is the first time I've been able to handle a Raven watch for an extended period of time. However, before we get to the review, if you're enjoying the contents of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. So as of the recording of this video, this watch is available on the Raven website in a number of case finishes for an MSRP of $690. The case is 39 millimeters in diameter, 48 millimeters lug to lug. It's 13.5 millimeters thick, but I would say about 1.5 millimeters of that is this massively domed sapphire crystal. And then it has a 20 millimeter lug with opening. Now this case has been treated with a beautiful gold PVD. Honestly, when I first saw this watch, I didn't think I would really like the gold, but it has really grown on me. The majority of the watch is brushed. However, we have these really lovely high polished undercuts on the mid case that make the watch appear much thinner on the wrist. Now the lugs are drilled for easy strap changes. The lugs also don't curve down so on my six and three quarters inch wrist there is a little bit of lug float but the 48 millimeter lug to lug distance is very forgiving as are the negative end links on the bracelet. While it is very comfortable on bracelet I really think this watch looks best on a black strap which I will show later. The stock bracelet is treated with the same gold DLC as the case. The bracelet starts at 20 millimeters before tapering down to 16. I can't overstate how much I prefer a four millimeter taper over a two on a bracelet. The balance just feels better, especially on a sub 40 millimeter watch. There's absolutely no play in these solid end links, which is impressive because they are quick release. I'm so glad this is becoming more common as it really encourages strap changes. The articulation across the back of the watch and between the links is excellent, two factors that are important in a comfortable bracelet. The three link style is brushed on top and high polish on the sides. The clasp is small and helps maintain the sleek feel of that four millimeter taper. It has the Raven logo and two high polish chambers. This is just a friction fit bezel with a safety catch, but the scissor is fully milled and we have four micro positions. Finally, sizing is accomplished with screw links, which is very convenient. The screw-in case back helps provide a whopping 300 meters of water resistance. The case back isn't treated with the gold DLC, but you won't notice this on the wrist. The case back features the Raven logo as well as information about the watch. I really like that the year of production is right here on the case back. I think more watches should do this. It's a really cool data point. This watch is powered by the Miyota 9015, which is good. Above 500 I would really like to see a Miyota, ETA, or Salita being used. This is a hacking hand winding 28,800 vibration per hour movement with a 42 hour power reserve and a stated accuracy of minus 10 to plus 30 seconds a day. However, Raven does take the additional step of regulating their watches, and this one is keeping great time at between plus 6 and plus 7 seconds a day in the dial up position, and then plus 7 seconds per day in the crown up position. The screw down crown on this watch is massive at almost 8 millimeters in diameter and four millimeters in profile and is also treated with the same gold DLC as the rest of the case and bracelet. The crown is nicely knurled and the crown and bezel knurling match. The crown is also signed with the Raven logo. The threading and unthreading action is very smooth. I love big crowns like this. I think they both look cool and make winding and operating the watch so much easier. The boxed sapphire crystal is treated with anti-reflective coating and is about 1.5 millimeters proud of the bezel. This boxed sapphire looks awesome and causes interesting distortions when viewing the watch from an angle. It also gives the watch a nice vintage feel. I love the choice of crystal on this watch. The 120 click unidirectional bezel is nicely knurled. It's quite easy to grip and the action is chunky and very clicky. Everything lines up perfectly at 12. The insert is ceramic and is quite shiny. Arabic numerals are used for the 10 minute intervals with a red triangle at 12. The bezel is also fully loomed and that loom is excellent. This bezel looks fantastic in combination with the gold case, gold hands, and gilt dial. At the edge of the dial is a gilt half railroad track. The indices are loomed and edged in that same gilt color. The 12 o'clock position is a large triangle with large dashes for 6 and 9 which help with orientation. A frame date window resides at 3. The Raven logo and Raven reside at 12 with the depth rating and automatic at 6. The depth rating is printed in red which looks very nice with the red triangle in the bezel. The dial looks excellent framed with that ceramic bezel and gold case. The hour and minute hands have a slight facet that helps them catch light and are filled with loom 
and edged in gold in high polish. The minute hand is plenty long, reaching all the way out to the half railroad track at the edge of the dial. The second hand is also high polished gold with a loomed lollipop at the tip and small counterbalance. Loom here is excellent and you can see that bezel is also fully loomed and it's keeping up with some other loom monsters here with the Helios and the Dryden. And here is the watch on my six and three quarters inch wrist. You can see it's a great size. I love this 39 millimeter size, shorter lug to lug with 48 millimeters, but I am going to show it to you on a rubber strap and I think this black rubber strap really elevates it. I do love the gold, but it's a lot of gold on the bracelet and there's just something about this black strap here that kind of accentuates the rest of the watch and plays the gold down a little bit. So pros and cons starting with the pros. Well, first this watch has basically every spec you could ever want, save for perhaps a quick adjust clasp. Second, I love the boxed sapphire crystal and that massive eight millimeter crown. Third, the loom is excellent and includes that bezel insert. Last, I think the color scheme looks fantastic. While I don't think I would personally pick the gold one, I think they really executed it well. As for cons, I only have a few. The first is the clasp. The friction fit works fine, but I don't really like that style bracelet. And at this price point, other brands have started to introduce quick adjust bracelets, and I would love to see Raven do so in the future. The second is just the flat style of this K shape. I actually prefer watches with a bit more of a curve, but that's just because they tend to fit better on smaller wrists. As for comparables, for about the same price, you could check out the NTH Barracuda. The vintage black colorway has a very similar feel. You can see a review of that watch on my channel as well. For a bit less, check out the Steinhardt Ocean 1 Vintage Military. It has a similar set of specs, except you lose the quick release bracelet, and keep in mind it's slightly larger at 42 millimeters. Finally, for a bit more, you could consider the Genoa Silent Service, which I had a chance to review. It has similar retro vibes and an incredibly high quality package. So there you have it the Raven Trekker 39. What do you think about this watch? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you're enjoying the contents of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. That's all for this time. My name is Jason, and you have been watching Just Watches.